This fan made me wonder, how could I figure out how fast it was spinning? And also, most importantly, how can I do it in a fun way? Should I use math and calculate the RPM from the line frequency and motor poles? Should I build a possibly complicated mechanical or sensor-based tachometer to measure rotating speed? Well, what about strobe lights? They are very simple and easily understood, and if you ever saw the stroboscopic effect in action, it appears as if a rotating object is frozen in space. In general, this is how it works. Say we are focusing on this fan blade that's rotating around a circle. When the light is turned on, we see it for a brief moment until the light turns off, and during that dark time, the fan blade moves, and once it reaches the same starting spot as before, the light turns back on. Meaning that our eyes are kind of tricked into thinking that the object hasn't moved at all. This also means at the point where we see the object hold still is when the frequency of the flashing light matches the frequency of rotation of the object and we can easily figure out how fast that object is spinning. I started by taking apart an LED light bulb rated at 500 lumens. I took the case apart and based on the circuit, these array of LEDs can handle about 60 volts DC. To power the light, I used a DC to DC boost converter that I bought online. Sadly, I could only get it up to 40 volts, but it wasn't a big issue as it gave off plenty of light. Now that I can turn on my light, I have to add a switch in the form of an N channel MOSFET to control the flashing. That MOSFET will then be controlled by this Arduino Nano. Now there's two very important things to consider when making a strobe light. The flashing frequency range and the duty cycle. Now the frequency range can vary a little from person to person, only because we are depending on the eye's persistence of motion. Lower than 5 Hz and it becomes very difficult to detect the rotations, and higher than 60 Hz may just blend the flashing light into a constant light source for most people. My strobe light has a range of 5 Hz to 66 Hz, and that's perfectly fine, however if you so wish you can extend that range in the code. A little side note here. Keep in mind I'm recording with a DSLR and that also affects how you see the image in this video. I figured out that to best represent how our eyes see the rotating object was to record at 30 frames per second and not the 60 frames per second that I usually record at. Duty cycle controls the on and off time of the light and there are some trade-offs you have to consider. Having a very short duty cycle, in other words turning on the light for a very short period of time, can offer the sharpest image during rotation, but because the light is so brief, you make the overall lighting significantly dimmer. Having a longer duty cycle will be the vice versa. You will have more light to work with at a cost of a more blurry image. So I quickly want to go into the code and explain uh, what values you need to change in order to get like a different frequency and kind of uh, behind the scenes of what's happening in this code. First of all, we're working with a 7-seg uh, library to drive the 7-segment display. Um, and then we're also working with a timer1 library uh, to drive the um, output pin for flashing the light. If you don't have any display or don't want to use a display, then a 7-segment library is totally not necessary, um, but I just use it for convenience. Now I have some notes over here to help you, but um, basically to change the frequency, um, you need to change uh, these values, uh, 15 and 200 respectively. So on the lower end of the frequency range um, is 5 Hz and anything below 5 Hz is uh, generally not useful um, for strobe light applications because it makes it hard to um, detect the speed of the rotating object. But if you want to, you can um, change the value of 200 to something higher and that would decrease uh, the 5 Hz. Now on the other side of the range, um, the maximum is 66.6 Hz and that is set to a value of 15. Now if you want to make this a higher frequency, then what you would do is um, do a lower number. Um, so maybe a value of 10 or 5 and then you would get a higher frequency range. 
And so down here we have the timer one PWM function and it is explained right here so you know what you're changing. Um, so the first one is the pin and uh, the second one is um, a value for the duty cycle. Um, this ranges from uh, 0 to 1024. Um, so you can change this however you like, but um, 15 is uh, generally good. Uh, I wouldn't change this um, all that much, and I definitely wouldn't go over uh, a value of 30 because uh, then it just uh, makes the image look blurry when the object is spinning. But um, yeah, you can mess around with that if you want to. And right here we set the frequency, and um, that's in microseconds. So I want to explain why I used all of these map functions. And that has to do with how the seven segment display was not accurately displaying the frequency at which the light was flashing at. What caused this was the timer values that were logarithmic and the potentiometer values that were linear. So what you would have is the numbers displayed at the beginning and very end were accurate, but everything else in between was not. The potentiometer could control the frequency that the light flashed at with no problems, but it was more about how the seven segment display uh, should be displaying the right frequency. So to solve this, I decided to interpolate all the linear values down to match the logarithmic values, and that gave me a display that showed the proper frequency when I turned the knob. However, because I can't get rid of the logarithmic curve, I still have different sensitivity over the number range. In other words, closer to 5 Hz, I have more control over the frequency, and closer to 60 Hz, the values get too sensitive, jumpy, or glitchy. Now that all that information is out of the way, I can show you some effects of the strobe light. I built this new setup to rotate a piece of cardboard with some reflective aluminum tape on it, and you can adjust the speed of the motor with a variac. Notice, by the way, that I only put this reflective tape on one side of the cardboard. It's important to have a reference when you are looking at something spinning. Now I set up the motor to spin at 10 Hz, so it makes 10 full rotations per second. Now I know it's hard to see, but when the light is flashing at 10 Hz and the motor is spinning at 10 Hz, you can make out almost a frozen image of the piece of cardboard. And notice how the image looks exactly the same like when it wasn't spinning, meaning the reflective tape is still only on one side. Now, the motor stays spinning at 10 Hz, but I make the light flash faster and stop at 20 Hz. And at 20 Hz, the reflective tape is now on both sides of the cardboard. This means we are at double the speed. And when I increase the flashing to 30 Hz, you can probably guess what happens. At three times the speed, we get three images. And at four times the speed, we get four images, and so on. As far as I understand, strobe lights can be used to tune engines for proper timings and also are used in manufacturing to check on equipment that can't be turned off. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next one.